Greetings computer scientists, philosophers and everything in between. Welcome to my talk. My name is Rach Arnold. I'm a graduate from the University of York with a master's in philosophy. And today I am gonna talk about computers. So this is way out of my comfort zone. So the pretentious title of my talk is a philosophical comparison between the human mind and the computer. But in reality, I'm just looking at the metaphor, the mind is a computer, or if you like a cheeky simile, the mind is like a computer. And kind of seeing if that's a valid metaphor slash comparison that we should have for the mind and whether or not it is, in fact, like a computer. But a few disclaimers before I begin. First of all, I'm talking about the human mind because that is the most interesting. As much as I love talking about the mind of a cat and what they're thinking, I think it's safe to say our minds are slightly more complex and the more complex, the more interesting it is to talk about. Another disclaimer, I'm talking about the mind, not the brain. I class the brain as the physical, the fleshy, wrinkly thing that lives in our head, whilst our mind consists of our memories, our thoughts, our feelings, just everything kind of non-physical within our brain. So you can kind of think of it as the brain is like the outer shell whilst the mind is all the metaphysical happenings within the shell. And the last disclaimer, I am not a computer scientist in that I may st say stuff wrong. I might use the word binary incorrectly, but I hope you forgive me because I will try my best. <laughs> so I want to start off with some literature because that's where this metaphor first really began in literature and science fiction where we saw in these stories the idea that the mind is like a computer or even that the mind can be put into the computer because they're interchangeable. I want to talk about um, a book written in the 1930s by John Scott Campbell called The Infinite Brain. Now the basic premise is that there's a crazy inventor who is trying to reverse engineer the mind and create an artificial brain. But here's a quote of what the inventor is trying to do. I am attempting to construct a mechanism exactly duplicating the mechanical and electrical processes occurring in the human brain and constituting human thought. This kind of suggests that he is trying to create a physical brain that has enough circuits, has enough wiring that put together can create a mind, can create those thoughts. And you see so many examples of these kind of storylines in science fiction throughout the years and dystopian universes where robots and human minds are exactly alike. And it's just interesting that we've seen this comparison so much throughout cultures, but is it a valid comparison to make is my question. You might be asking, is this really important? Why, why, why should we investigate whether or not it is a good comparison to make? And well, as computers become more complex, as you computer scientists will definitely know more than me, computers have had memory, computers can make decisions, computers can recognise faces, can even learn new languages, and it's starting to sound like a computer can do a lot of the things a mind can, obviously not to the same degree yet, but if it's the case that the mind really is just a bunch of ones and zeros, in the future, like the far off dystopian future, it might be possible that we can reverse engineer, uh, we can, uh, that we can reverse engineer and create a mind. And that opens up a lot of really weird philosophical possibilities like can you put your mind into a computer and live forever? Is that really you? Is that really your mind or is it just an artificial mind? And I, I, I would go off on a philosophical tangent about that, but we are sticking with our comparison between the mind and the computer. That can be saved for next time. First thing I want to do now is go over a bit of the history of this idea that the mind is essentially a fancy computer by looking at the, comp the <laughs> I can't say this word, the computational theory of the mind, which was first suggested by Warren McClock and Walter Pitt, who were, I want to say, physicists. 
slash philosophers, great combo, um, in 1942. The clock and pit were the first people to suggest that neuroactivity is computational and that the human mind is just a complex information processing system that comes together to form what we know as consciousness. So it is purely physical, it is just our brain wires working to create our thoughts, our feelings, everything can be explained physically. This kind of means that our thoughts themselves are computations and by that I mean they're just a systematic set of laws or they're just really really complex code if you like. So that's the basic idea of the computational theory of the mind is that the mind is just a really complex information processing system much like a computer would be. However philosophers are never satisfied with the first answer so we're gonna look a bit deeper on whether or not it is the case our minds are this very complex system or if there's more than that. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to talk about the philosophy of the mind, what that involves and then look at two contrasting views um, about what the mind is and how that relates to the question as a whole. Philosophy of the mind is a branch of philosophy that studies the ontology and nature of the mind so this includes stuff like mental events, mental functions, mental properties and of course our very consciousness, which if you saw my last talk, we also don't know what that is because philosophers don't really know what anything is, we just guess. Just like we don't know what the mind is. There are many theories about how the mind works, whether or not it's physical or non-physical and there is no definite, no objective answer to this question. There are many theories about what the mind is and where the mind resides that's why there's so many questions in philosophy about it like the mind body problem okay so as i mentioned we're going to now look at two opposing views the first view kind of suggests yes 100 percent the mind it's basically just a fancy computer and that view is materialism which for all intents and purposes i'm gonna define materialism and physicalism as the same, they are one in the same for the purposes of this talk because the definition of materialism that I'm going to go with for this talk is that everything, everything that exists is material, everything is physical and everything can be explained using the physical world. Much like atheism is a philosophy of religion approach that denies religion Materialism is a metaphysical approach that denies metaphysics because it argues that there is nothing beyond the physical. So how does that relate to the mind? So it's very much not the case that it's mind over matter because the mind is matter because everything is just physical. Everything can be explained using a physical or material exclamation. Your thoughts, your feelings, it's just your brain doing its thing, releasing chemicals, just reacting. Nothing metaphysical is happening in your head. It's all just your brain working to create this thing we know as a mind. So when it comes to your mind, when it comes to deep inside your head, there's over 86 billion neurons firing at once, going back and forth, sending messages. And that's what our thinking is our uh, thoughts, our feelings, it's just neurons firing. There's nothing else to be explained. There's no, there's no mystical, there's no mystery to it. It's just, this is, this is why stuff is happening. It's all physical. There's nothing mental going on, if you will. This is how many people today focus on the mind. This is how, this is what they see it as, as a material, physical thing that can be explained simply with what neurons are firing where, what code is being assigned. For example, um, if you are depressed, your doctor would describe you with antidepressants. Why? Because depression, one can argue, is explained physically. Your brain is not producing enough serotonin, which is a physical problem, not a mental problem. So you take antidepressants to compensate for the lack of serotonin. This is explained physically, there's nothing else going on. But obviously many people believe that's, that might not be the case, that 
there's more to feel our feelings more to our mental wellness than what our brain is up to physically a really cool case study that i do actually want to talk about that kind of supports materialism is the story of phineas gage who in the 1800s had a terrible accident where a very long iron pole um, went through his head it went through his left lobe of the brain and what's really interesting about this case is that his mind was completely changed before the incident uh phineas had one kind of personality with beliefs and thoughts and stuff that were generally quite positive and then all of a sudden after the incident the rest of his life he had a whole different personality that was apparently changed due to the physical changes in his brain he turned into like a grouchy cynical person with a whole different belief and thought system for the rest of his life now some could obviously argue well who wouldn't be grouchy after you've had a massive pole in your brain but it led to psychologists believing for the first time that the physical brain is responsible for your mental capacities I just want to quickly compare this view of materialism to the view the mind is computer because these two views fit perfectly. According to materialism, our brain is actually a bunch of really complex wires and I may not be a genius but that's how I really see computers as well. A bunch of really complex wires that get in a tangle and messes with my head. It's like a computer has RAM for memory the mind has a hippocampus for memory. The two are very interchangeable. And if it's the case that all the mind is, is the physical, is the, is the material, then there's a good chance that way into the future, we could reverse engineer all the physical aspects of the brain to create what we know as a mind, as consciousness. I think what I'm saying here is, although materialism has a lot, a lot, a lot of problems, which I will happily go on to later or answer in the Q&A if I run out of time, it can be argued from this perspective that the mind is a computer, a really complex neuron firing code destroying computer not code destroying don't destroy your mind code that 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 would be bad however when one opinion emerges so does another so i want to look at an opposing view which is the complete opposite i want to look at hinduism uh hindu philosophy which is not western philosophy so i didn't really study it much at uni so once again disclaimer i'm not an expert on this but i do think this is a really really interesting contrasting theory on the one hand over here you have materialism which says the mind is matter but over here you've got this hindu philosophy that says no 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 matter is the mind no mind no matter in that <laughs> The mind doesn't exist physically. The mind is purely a metaphysical thing. So you've got materialism that says it is a purely physical thing. And then this Hindu philosophy that suggests it's the complete opposite. It is a non-physical entity, which is, you have your brain, which is obviously a physical thing in your head. Go get a head scan if you don't believe it's not that. But the mind itself, the consciousness isn't a physical thing. Many Hindus believe the mind isn't many, the mind is one. And they believe in something called the cosmic mind. They do have a fancy word for this, but I would butcher the pronunciation. And this kind of draws on the idea of how do we know reality exists? Once again, this might be a bit of a philosophical tangent, but bear with me, this is a really interesting point in that when you see the world, how do you know, how do you know, um, how do you know Jodie Whittaker, the beautiful doctor, exists? Well, Bertrand Russell would say, well, we all just kind of agree she's there. I mean, physically, I can touch her, I can feel her, I can smell her, smells like plastic. 
uh, you guys can't smell her, so you just have to take my word for it. But Hindu philosophy says we know we know Jody's here because it's what our collective mind agrees. So it's not the case that we're all individually going, yeah, 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 okay, it's okay. It's us all together as a whole going, yes, this thing is existing. Ow. Let me put it in a way, according to um, Hinduism and the mind, what we see in our everyday is just reflections of the mind. We see what our mind shows us, much like, much like Plato's cave in Greek philosophy. Plato's cave essentially is a story of how the prisoners in the cave who sees the world through shadows, they do not see the true forms outside the cave. They just go about life only knowing what the shadows show them. And that is what our mind is doing when it comes to this idea of philosophy. Our concept of the physical world is only shadows. It's only a projection of what is actually hidden. Obviously this is quite a different concept. It's hard to get uh, your head around that the mind is something not physical, but many people such as supplements Dualists would agree that the mind, the body, including the brain, is separate. The mind and brain are two completely different things and the mind is a non-physical thing. There are many people who believe that. So if it's the case, the mind is this mystical, metaphysical, non-physical thing, what does that mean when I say the mind is a computer? Well, according to this Hindu philosophy, it can't be the best a computer could be in comparison to the mind is a cheap imitation in that it is like one of the shadows sure it can make decisions sure it has memory but it is not the true form that is the cosmic mind it can never compare to the mind itself yeah i think i think i explained that the best i could um but those are two contrasting views very contrasting views the complete opposite in fact of whether or not the mind is like a computer and I think the conclusion is really it depends which is such a which is such a um unsatisfactory conclusion but it honestly depends on your belief of what you think a mind is for example I personally think materialism isn't quite what we're going for I think there is more to the mind than just the physical stuff and if you want to ask me more about that and how I think materialism fails, please ask me in the Q&A. But I would love to know what you guys think. So leave me a message, drop me an email, comment in the Q&A. Tell me what you guys think, because it is really interesting to hear different philosophers or even people who aren't philosophers, you guys, um, your view on what the mind actually is. Do you think it's a physical thing? Do you think it's a metaphysical thing? Do you think it's something completely different or something in between the two? I would love you to let me know and maybe we can work out a uh, superior theory together of whether or not our mind is like a computer. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, like I said, do drop me a message if you want to know more or if you want to chat philosophy in general, I'm always down for that. I've been Rach Arnold and I will talk to you in the Q&A if you have any questions. Farewell.